Hey guys, Boris Lasberg from BK Forex, BKForex.com, BK Forex Advisors. This week I've been getting a lot of questions about the difference between the RSI value and the RSI roller coaster. People are asking me what is really the, uh, the actual difference between the two trades. And basic difference in one simple word is trend. The key thing that I try and do with my RSI value is to always trade a trend. So in other words, to put it simply, if RSI roller coaster just tries to pick tops and bottoms irrespective of where we are in trend, RSI value only tries to buy bottoms in an uptrend or tries to sell tops in a downtrend. And I wanted to show you how this worked this week with a couple of trades that I did in the euro and the pound. So the first and foremost we can see here euro dollar daily chart 10 period SMA that establishes our trend. And let me just make sure this was I think this was the 10th. Yes. Yeah, so let's go back to the 10th. So um, on the 10th, we are well below the 10 period SMA. Remember, we determined trend by the day before. So if I'm looking, if today is the 10th, I'm looking at the candle on the 9th. The candle on the 9th basically uh, is well below the 10 SMA, so I'm still in a downtrend, which means that I'm going to be looking to sell tops. And in the way we define tops in the RSI, um, RSI value is simply that we want the RSI on the hourly charts to go above 70 and then come back. This is the critical thing. We always want the RSI to come back just a little bit um, above 70 because the whole thing is, what if it's a true turn? If it's a true turn, it's going to stay in the 70s and continue uh, rallying up for until it becomes actually an uptrend, until it breaks the 10 period SMA. So the key thing that I want everybody to understand is that I'm looking for price to actually turn a little bit before I come back and begin to short it. So classic example here. Here's uh, your dollar RSI. It's still in a downtrend, April 9th, right? And uh, it goes up to 70.21. The next candle after that breaks below 70. It's, it ends at 65.95. I short over here. The trade actually takes quite a long time. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hours before we kind of start to, uh, you know, we, we test the top here at 31.50. And finally, the euro drops down and I'm able to hit target. Um, as I said, these kind of trades set up much more rarely than the RSI bungee jump or even the RSI roller coaster. But because they're rare, they tend to be a lot more accurate. So let's take a look at a couple of other ideas here. This is the pound dollar, same concept. So we have the pound dollar, 10 period SMA. And let me just make sure I'm telling you the right uh, trade. Yeah, okay, so this is actually, I was shorting this on the, on the 9th, and it, it, it completed on the 10th. So pound dollar on the 9th, right? Very interesting um, uh, point here. On the 9th, so I'm taking my, my Q from the day before, April 8th, well below the uh, um, uh, well below the 10 period SMA. So remember, this is one of the key things that you don't want to do. You don't want to have what's called the backward bias, where you already know where the price action is, and then say, "Oh, I shouldn't have I should have gone short because it was already almost up to the 10 period SMA." On the on the ninth, you do not have the the the, the forecast that it's going to go all the way up. All you know is that the day before it was still below 10 period SMA. That's your cue for how you're going to take your trend. So now I'm looking to sell highs in um, on the ninth if it comes back if it goes up to above uh, 70 now frankly the pound trade was a little bit of a cheat okay and I actually cheated this a little bit um, as you can see just bear with me I'm gonna actually there we go I'm gonna bring everything in um, and the reason why it was a little bit of a cheat is because if you see the candle here it went up to 6620 did not quite make it to 70 the next candle after that was 61.33. I took the trade. Basically, my idea is that you really want to wait till it's 70 and then come back down. But if you want to take 65 and then below, you could probably take that trade as well. Uh, may not be not may not be as accurate a lot of times as this one, but um, um, it did work. So bottom line is, I took this trade. I cheated a little bit um, instead of waiting for 70. And the pound, of course, turned also uh, after about six or seven hours eventually, and then dropped all the way down. Uh, and came back in. So two for two trades this week on a very, very specific, high probability, very particular trade where you're basically trying to um, sell tops in a downtrend, buy bottoms in an uptrend. That is really what RSI value is all about. And I think it's a great setup. I'm wishing you guys the best of luck and the best of trading. A lot more trades next week. We're back from uh, all of our travels, back at BK Full Force. So come join us at bkforex.com, and I hope you guys to see you there. I'll be back on Twitter full-time. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.